here's our next candidate for restoration, a Heathkit HR-10B. Let's get into it. Good day, and welcome back to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration. If you're enjoying our series of videos, please hit the subscribe button. You could certainly use the uh, use the help. I would greatly appreciate it if you would uh, hit that button. And uh, today, uh, up on the bench for re repair and restoration is a Heathkit HR-10B. And we're going to be doing the uh, five-step program that uh, I have introduced to you for restoring radios. Each step has a process we will go through, and we will go through that process, all five steps on this radio, so you can see how simple it is to really restore a radio once you put it into an organized state. So let's talk about the HR-10B a little bit. Um, it is not a great receiver. Um, there are lots of anecdotal uh, reviews that uh, it's not very sensitive on the upper bands. And uh, that may be the case. We're certainly going to find out. I've done a few in the past, many years ago, but nothing recently. So we're going to take a peek at that. But it has a, a place in history, a significant place in history. This receiver was available, of course, as a kit from Heathkit in the late 60s and early 70s. And a lot of North American amateur radio operators or aspiring to be amateur radio operators um, bought this kit. This was their first station, if you will, their first setup. This was often paired with a DX60 transmitter, a Heathkit transmitter, and the uh, additional outboard VFO for a complete AM CW station. Um, so, you know, it's not the best performing receiver. I'm sure it'll probably do better than a Halicraft S38. Um, but it's certainly not going to be any uh, communications, serious communications grade receiver. But it's a nice piece to have in your collection because of that history. Um, there are, are many of these out there, and there are many happy stories of people working uh, their first stations on this receiver. So, uh, again, I think it's a, a significant piece of radio history uh, for amateur radio. So uh, with this guy here, uh, we're going to uh, do step one of my restoration processes, which is we are going to do the initial uh, look over, check over on it to make sure that there's nothing damaged or broken or missing and that the power transformer is okay. So the whole point of this first step is making sure that there's nothing in our way to restoring this radio back to working condition that we don't have a burnt power transformer or something missing or broken that's going to stop us so this is step number one is we're going to do the initial inspection visually this receiver looks pretty good it's got a couple of little small chips out of the finish but nothing serious it's reasonably pretty all of the knobs are present here on the unit the only thing that i notice about um, the front of the receiver is is that the tuning knob is no longer connected to the uh, slide rule uh, indicator. So I suspect that might be just a dial cord or something simple. I don't think that's anything horrible. And let's just uh, see if we can get a hold over here now. I notice there's a few screws missing on the base, which is not really a big deal. We can replace those. On the back, you know, it looks fairly clean. One thing that I will probably do is it has two RCA jacks, one for the audio out and the other for the antenna. They, and I'll try to get a close-up picture of this, they're very short. Modern RCA jacks are a little bit deeper than this, and a modern RCA jack won't go in. I will probably wind up replacing them with, uh, with newer units. So the next step is, let's peel the covers off and have a look. Covers off. And it's a little dusty. Nothing shocking. Looks good. And as I had suspected, there's a, a broken dial cord here. So that's just not a biggie. That's not a showstopper. So uh, let's uh, just flip it over and have a look at the underside. 
Okay, taking a peek at the underside here. It's, uh, it's nice and clean. I don't see anything broken. I don't see anything missing. So the uh, next step of this uh, initial assessment is to check the uh, power transformer and make sure it's okay. And if the power transformer is good, it looks like this is a go for restoration. So hang on a sec, and I'm going to get set up to check that power transformer out. Okay, we're uh, set up to check the uh, high voltage AC from the transformer. So I'm click clipped on. I've removed the uh, the voltage rectifier tube so that the set's not live. And we're going to be checking the power coming out of the power transformer for high voltage. At my line voltage, the power transformer should be somewhere around 410 to 420 volts in that region. If we see that, it's good. I've got my variac on in the back here. And when I turn the unit on, let's hope we see 410. If we see 410, that's a good sign. That'll come up pretty quick. And I see just a little less than 420, so we're right in the proper range to where that needs to be. So now we're going to set up again and check the filament voltage. Okay, we're set up to check the uh, 6.3 AC filament voltage. So when we turn it on, we should see around 6.2, 6.3 volts. And here we go. And yep, we're just almost 6.3 volts, which is good. So now we know our power transformer is good. So far, we've only discovered a few missing screws and a broken dial cord. Uh, we can see, let me just shut my power off back here. We've got an old electrolyte capacitor here that needs to be replaced. And of course, we're going to change that filter capacitor out. Um, one of the important things with Heathkit is the quality of the job the original assembler did. I've had some Heathkits that were absolute train wrecks that I had to re-solder and redo so many connections it wasn't funny. And I've had others um, that were done very well. And this one's not bad. This one's done pretty good. He's been a little stingy on the solder in a few spots and a little cold in a few spots. But that's nothing I can't go around and touch up real fast and get that real done, uh, re redone real fast. Just checking the last tube here. Been through them all so far. And that one's good too. <clears throat> very surprisingly, all of the tubes in this radio are in very good shape and I don't have to replace any. <clears throat> so I guess with that in hand, that uh, ends uh, step one and part one of our... Uh, Heath Kit HR10B restoration. So until the next one, we'll see you again.